Because label reading can be one of the more difficult things done in dosage, it can make a mistake on a dosage test actually a pretty easy thing to do. So I want to take a second to spend some time looking at the pieces of a label that we have and it intentionally is very small because this is typical of what you're going to see in the real world and unfortunately the older we get the more difficult this becomes. All right so if I look at question one it's asking me to evaluate how many micrograms are contained in 0.5 milliliters of atropine. So in order to figure this out I have to look at my label and I have to know the pieces on my label in order to extract the information I need to work the problem. It doesn't matter that I can see 20 milliliters. That simply tells me um, if I were interested in finding out exactly how many doses were in this vial for a given patient and how long it would last me, I could figure that out because I know the volume in this vial. But what's more important is to actually know the breakdown per milliliter of drug because when this is mixed together, it is a powder form of drug and a solution that is added mixed together and all labels will give you a breakdown of how much drug per volume they contain. So to do this I can see that this is 0.4 milligrams per 1 ml. Because my question is asking for micrograms, I'm going to go ahead and convert the milligram to microgram. So 0.4 milligrams is the same thing as 400 micrograms, still the same volume. The volume didn't change, only the label on the drug. Now that I know this, I can figure out how much this specific volume is equal to in drug. So if I'm doing ratio and proportion, I have 400 micrograms for 1 ml and I need to know 0.5 ml, the value in micrograms. So my ratio and proportion problem, x is equal to 200 and x represents micrograms. So 0.5 milliliters from this mixture is equal to 200 micrograms. The other piece that will be seen in objective two are reading syringes. And I'm happy to have this type of syringe because I want to point out some very important things about reading syringes, which is that when you're looking at this bevel, to blow this up for the stopper piece in, I want you to know that there are three places you could technically read this from, but which one is correct. You could read from the tip, which is the point, but that wouldn't be accurate because there's actually drug in this space on both sides. You could also read from here, which is the very base of the stopper, but that won't give you an accurate reading either because there's no drug in this area. So the best place to read your syringes are from where the edge of your stopper in your syringe meets the side of the syringe. So if I'm reading this, what I really need to know is what are my breakdowns on my syringe and I'm going to start by seeing how much this syringe would have if it were completely full. So the two things I'll know is that if it's completely full, it'll have three cc's or three milliliters. That not only is my syringe broken out by half, but I need to know what each hash mark represents by how many are in between. So if I see this and I know that there are one, two, three, four, five, in between my half mark and my whole mark, that tells me that each one of these lines represent 0.1. So this line is 0.1, the second line would be 0.2, and so on until I got to my halfway mark, which would be 0.5. My whole mark would be 1.0. So if each one of my marks after are 0.1, that means that this first mark after the number 1 is 1.1, 1 .1, and so on. This syringe is at the second hash mark after the number 2, meaning that it is 2. If it were the first hash mark, it would be 0.1, but it's the second. So this syringe has 2.2 mLs or cc's in its chamber.